Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome uh, to uh, this particular video where I am going to be talking about the new lens from Fuji, which has got me all excited. I'll see you after this. Hello there. Uh, yesterday I watched the Fuji, I suppose you'd call it a keynote speech. That's not what they called it, but my memory is failing. Um, and there's some really interesting new stuff coming out from Fuji this year. You've got the this little E something, uh, X E something or other, uh, which looks like a really nice camera, which is really small uh, and, and easy, sort of easy to carry around kind of camera. I think that looks fantastic. Not something that I'm interested in myself, but I can see that there would be people who would absolutely love something like that. And the quality of it should be really just stunning considering. Uh, considering what food you can actually get for it. That, that is for photo shooters, for snapper sort of photo shooters. Uh, and it looks like it, it, it'll be great. Anyway, um, also the, the, the GFX 100S is coming out, smaller body, lighter body, uh, some great uh, uh, IBIS in there, weather resistant, obviously, and a much cheaper price point, price point price a point that's not right uh six grand for that as opposed to the 10 grand that you would have spent on the uh 100 uh a few years ago so that's coming down in price that means that it's slowly going to be more affordable for people and this camera is something that that you know the sensor on this we've already seen blows Hasselblad out of the water and and Leica as well they're both of their cameras they are so much more expensive you're talking I think you're talking something like five times the price for the Hasselblad. Might be wrong about that, but I, I've not looked into them much. Uh, but they're ridiculously expensive. So that's um, another good option if you're professional, if you know what you're doing. Uh, they've also put all the sort of the, the autofocus stuff, the autofocus algorithms are now in the 100S. So it's becoming more convenient to shoot on as well. So very interesting. And I'm interested to see where that GFX line goes because at some point I'm going to want to buy one. I mean, I want to buy one now. I can't afford it or justify it, but I want to buy one now. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm sure you do. Anyway, uh, the big thing for us X shooters is the 70 to 300 mil lens. Now, this is a lens that has been fabled for about a year. Fuji did say they were doing it, uh, but we weren't really sure about when it would come out or what price point it would be or anything. We have those stats now. So it's uh, 70 to 300. It's f4 to 5.6, which isn't bad on a 70 to 300 lens. In fact, I think that's the same as the Tamron lens. And uh, we used to have a Tamron lens for the Nikon cameras, and those are fantastic. So you're actually, you've got a, a really nice, um, um, uh, aperture range there. Not the fastest in the world and not actually as fast as the 100 to 400, which covers the same aperture but uh, with a higher focal range. So that's why I'm saying it's not as fast. Um, but uh, nonetheless, a, a perfectly good uh, um, aperture, perfectly usable, good focal range, um, and something that I think is going to be eminently usable. Now, the big thing that I was worried about with this lens was the weight, because it's all very well saying we've got a, a 70 to 300. Will it be as heavy as the 50 to 140? Will it be as heavy as the 100 to 400, God forbid? Because depending on that weight depends on who is going to use it and how easy it is for them to use, uh, whether or not it's going to be a lens that just gets left in a bag somewhere because oh, it's a little bit heavy to carry around. Well, the brilliant news about this is that it comes in at about 580 grams. That's exactly the same weight as the 250, sorry, no, the 55 to 200, um, which I've used before and is a really light lens. I mean, anybody could carry that sort of thing around. Uh, if you have got uh, the lens that I use, the 18 to 135, then that means that you could have an effective focal range between 18 and um, 300, which would then top out at the full frame equivalent of 420. Don't ask. 18 is something like 27. I, 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 I don't. I don't know. I don't think it's that vital that you know what the full frame equivalent is. The APS-C version of it, you would you would get 
18 to 300 all in two lenses. Two very light lenses as well. So that, well worth looking into. If you've got the 18 to 55 and you're worried about the, the kind of gap between the two, Personally, I wouldn't. Personally, the amount of times that I shoot between 55 and 70 are rare and, you know, I, I mean, I don't always think about it, but you tend to shoot more towards the end of the lens or the beginning of the lens. You don't use that right in the middle bit. Uh, at least I don't anyway. So, um, yeah, there's a there's a good chance that you could use your 18 to 55, get the 70 to 300. You could have a nice focal range in there, a bit of a gap in the middle that you probably don't actually need to worry about most of the time. So, uh, some good options then. And what's it good for? Well, I don't think it's going to replace the 55 to 200 in part because the 55 to 200 is a faster lens. So 55 to 200 is actually is a really good lens for doing portraiture with, uh, but it can handle some of the uh, landscape shots as well. It's good for compressing scenery. Um, it's good for drawing things closer, obviously. You've not got quite the reach that you have with the 300, but you've got a good enough reach to do something which is pretty good. The extra reach that you would get on the 70 to 300 is very useful. It means you don't need to crop into images so much if you haven't quite got that uh, that zoom range. Uh, but it's not uh, it's not something that is absolutely vital. Where this is going to come into its own, I think, is with wildlife photography and with sports photography, uh, because there are plenty of people out there who want to do both of those things, uh, but can't quite manage the 100 to 400. Both of my parents are exactly uh, the same on this. They've tried my lens, it's too heavy for them. Um, the 70 to 300, because again, you don't always shoot at 400 mil if you're on a 400 mil lens. You know, you will often shoot at 300 mil. The difference between 300 and 400 is important, but it's not a lot. So you could get away, especially when you're on uh, the X-T3 or X-T4, which is a 26 meg camera, cropping in a little bit and getting a 20 megapixel image um, out of out of a a, a, a well framed shot. So it, perfectly acceptable, perfectly usable, perfectly printable at many, 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 many uh, sizes as well. 20, uh, 21 meg, I think, was the Nikon, and I've printed that quite large already. So um, creating your images at 20 megapixels with a little bit of an extra gap so that you can zoom in is, is perfectly fine. Um, that would mean that you would, uh, you know, you could do an awful lot of the sort of photography that I've done um, without having to carry around that very, very heavy lens. And, you know, for, for people who are older or for people who aren't quite as physically able, that means that you've got a nice light lens that you can put on the front of your camera uh, that isn't going to break your arm every time you, you pick the thing up. Because it is that weight on the 400, is it? it's a really difficult thing to carry around uh, sometimes. For the rest of us who are able-bodied and are physically capable of carrying the 100 to 400 anyway, what this might do, and in fact this is one of the reasons why I'm still considering buying it, is that it would give you a, a kind of an everyday carry lens. So it's not heavy enough that you wouldn't want to just pick this up, put it in your bag, take it along with you when, with your other lenses as well, um, and then you've got a, a wildlife lens. Um, if you really wanted that extra reach as well, the lens will also take the teleconverter. Now that does push the um, the aperture up by one stop. So if you're instead of shooting at five point six, you're actually shooting at f at f eight at that point. Um, that's at three hundred. That would be at wherever wherever we are, four hundred and something mil. Um, but uh, it is an option, um, and it is something that again, if you haven't got that focal range covered and the 100 to 400 is either too expensive or too heavy for you, great lens. Because that's the other thing about this is the price. It's 800, um, 800 
dollars. It's 720 pound. It's about half the price of the 100 to 400 lens as well. So even if you added the teleconverter onto that as well, you'd still be paying less for it. It's more affordable. It's more pick uppable. Uh, it's more carry aroundable. Brilliant, uh, brilliant lens. Now, obviously, I haven't tried it yet. Um, I know that there are some people who have tried it and there are reviews on the internet already. Uh, those very lucky people, most of whom I would assume are Fuji ambassadors and the like. Um, but uh, if the quality of an XF lens is anything to go by, it means that it's going to be pretty good. Will it outperform the 50 to 200? I don't know, 55 to 200, I don't know. Will it outperform the 50 to 140? I doubt it. Um, but there's an awful lot to like about this lens. And actually, you know, the idea of having a wildlife lens in your kit that you have everywhere you go and you don't have to worry about the weight of, that's something that's very exciting. So what do you think about it? I'd love to know what you think in the comments below. Is this a lens that you have already put a, 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 a pre-order in for? Is this something that you're thinking of getting? Is this something that you might consider dumping your 55 to 200 for? What are your thoughts? Uh, leave a comment. And of course, leave a like on the video if you've enjoyed it. And uh, if you're new here, and you'd like to see more videos like this or more videos like we've got on the rest of the channel, then please do hit the subscribe button, the little bell icon at the end, and choose the all notifications tab that pops up. That's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. I hope you will enjoy yourself again on Sunday when I'll be back with something that I actually haven't recorded yet. We'll see. But until then, thanks very much for coming along. And don't forget, keep taking those photos.